What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today we're going to be checking out some more new arrivals at Blade HQ. It felt like I, I had just recently done this but it's been well over a month and I just took a quick look and there are an absolute crap load of uh, new stuff, of new, I'm sorry, of new knives at uh, Blade HQ. And I know a lot of you guys regularly do this anyway, right? If you don't do it, well then sit back and relax because I'm going to go through this stuff. You can sit here and listen to me talk about it, give my opinions, or if you don't want to do that, which is perfectly understandable, you can go right down in the description of this video right now uh, and click on the link, which will take you to exactly this page, and you can go through the new arrivals yourself. We're going to take a look at new arrivals today. We're going to take a quick look at coming soon, and I'm going to tell you guys what I think. Thanks so much to my patrons for supporting me, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. This is always nice. Gives people a look at a retailer that, you know, if you're not somebody who constantly, ch I, I check Blade HQ all the time, um, along with many other retailers. But if you don't do that, um, this might give you a look in here and you might find something that you want. So anyways, let's go ahead and see what's going on here. Artisan Calorie Arian, still a very well-priced uh, knife that is an excellent design. CPM S35VN, this one's in purple fat carbon, which I think looks really cool, especially in contrast with the black. This is a great knife. You can check out my full review of it. I'm really glad to see that they have not bumped the price on this thing. It has remained to my knowledge at $200 since they released it, and that's pretty cool. There's a blue TR5 there. Are they still doing these in CPM D2? No, these are S35VN. Okay, cool. That's pretty cool. I think I like the bigger ones better. Those are the ones that I always remember being in CPMD too. Um, Microtechs have been plentiful for a while now, but is it, is it just me or are there, there's just Microtechs everywhere? They are, they are everywhere, man. They're all over the place. If I find a cool, like a weird one, I usually point it out. But in general, it's just a blur of color and points. Concept Redis. I'm kind of surprised that Concept has not reached out to me to take a look at that one. That looks interesting. 170 Concept is always like their price points are always great. CPMS 35VN, full titanium, 8-inch knife. That actually looks pretty good. Not a milled clip, but eh, at 180 bucks, I'm not too upset about that. CPM 1... <laughs> Blade HQ. CPM 154CM. <laughs> It also says that it's S35VN over here. A uh, couple of errors here. There is no CPM 154 CM. It's either CPM 154 or 154 CM. And then uh, S35VN, that, that would be correct how they list that there. Can we see? Knowing concept, it is most likely. Yeah, there it is. You can see it. It's S35VN. <laughs> ah, well, you know, I mean, there's a lot of stuff. They, there's, it's no, there's no way it's just one guy keeping track of the you know, uh, the, the facts on these, right? They might just, it's, it's, you know, we're all human. Um, so that's, it's not that big of a deal. The mini synapse is available at Blade HQ right now. We'll see if these hang around. I'm recording this on a Friday afternoon. I tried to do this as close to the actual release as I can so that you guys have the best shot of getting some of this more difficult to find stuff. So you guys are probably watching this Saturday morning, just uh, maybe, I don't know, 12 to 18 hours later. The Mini Synapse is one of the best mini, heavy quotes, can't see my hands, mini knives. It's 6.6 .6 inches overall, but because of the handle profile, it does allow even people who wear an XL glove size to get a full purchase on this knife. Um, and because they do kind of the, the sub frame lock thing, um, it makes it super easy to manipulate without putting excess pressure on that lock bar. Um, this is one of my favorite mini knives in existence. And I also, I, have I own two knives from Vero that I love very much. If you like smaller knives and you like how the, I like this one the best, the black and the jade. I think that looks really good. But yeah, uh, that's one uh, that's one to go after. Pricey, but I, I like them. Uh, Sen cut, yeah, okay, it's forty five bucks. It's a knife. Uh, nothing against Sen cut. This is the one that I'm a little bit more interested in. The Acumen Acumen. Let's take a look at uh, the black and red one here. Forty bucks. It's three inches smaller than I thought. I would like them to do a big knife. We have a, Civivi and Sencut have mm, a lot of folding steak knife designs, and that's fine, um, but this is uh, this stands out because it's a little bit different. I think it's probably a little bit too short to have that flipper tab in there, especially with the shape of the, uh, 
the handle profile here. I think this would do much better as, um, you know, it, it would stand out a lot more if it was like nine to nine and a quarter inches, right? Big folding killer whale sort of looking knife. That would be really cool. Uh, looking at other companies who have done very well in deviating from that, that safe zone, long, slender, you know, sort of Ray Laconico looking steak knife, folding knives is great. But when you pull away from that and do something wild and crazy like, uh, you know, a Kubi or Concept often like we'll, we'll take risks on designs and sometimes they, they knock it out of the park, right? It would be cool to see some of that. Boker Lundquist, uh, nah, 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 nah. Warlock, that's the aluminum Warlock, DPXS. I have this knife right here. What? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, guys, I have this knife. I I automatically assumed that this was going to be much more expensive. Let me tell you what this is. This These are titanium bolsters, and it has a steel liner lock. This is a big knife, a robust knife. It's not an ultra, you know, meaty, you know, donkey hammer beef tank, you know, kind of knife like I've been showing here lately, but it's big. It actually is titanium right here, and underneath it is a pretty robust steel liner lock. Stamped out clip, but an M390 blade. G10 and titanium. 148 bucks? Dude, I assumed this would be at least $200. Didn't even look up the price. I unboxed. You guys haven't seen the unboxing yet. Um, I think the one they sent me was this guy right here. So if you like the micarta look, this is a cool knife. Definitely. Nine, almost nine and a half inches. Um, 148 bucks. Yeah, shoot. <laughs> if you're looking for a big, crazy knife, that's a great price. Doesn't surprise me at all that Max Ace is, you know, doing more along the lines of the Black Mirror where they're offering some fantastic materials and build quality for the money. That is a, a an outstanding price tag on that thing. What is happening right now? Are we, we, we're, they're shifting on me here. More Nafsco Lander Scales. Looks like an ice cream sandwich. Is that what it, Oh, no, it's sorry. It's a rainbow trout. Big difference between fish and ice cream, folks. Um, <laughs> sorry, it looked like ice cream to me. The moon, that's a nice one. Uh, that makes sense with the lander and the... Yeah. Um, 80, 20.5 shark locks. Most likely these are going to be the Aus 10A. Nope, D2. Better, but that's a lot of money for regular D2. Um, it's fine. I mean, if you're just really itching to get a decent one, right? For you don't want to spend 300, 350 bucks in the titanium ones. Just, I just wish they'd do one in G10 and S35VN and charge us 175 bucks for it. You know, it may not be possible, but I really wish that that was their basic, like that was their entry level model. Wish they'd get rid of the Grivery, get rid of the Aus 10A and the D2. Right. I stood up for this knife and um, I, I do stand by what I said. I can understand, you know, initially them doing that. But now they initially when everything was getting going, right, they had to take some risks. But now that it this is a well established, I mean, they essentially created an evergreen knife out of thin air. It's doing pretty well. I, I think that, uh, and I imagine maybe that is their plan, right? To get get through all of the Aus 10A and the D2 and the Grivery and then they have a, a new standard one, right? At least, at least make the standard one S35VN and um, Grivery, right? At least do that. And then people can replace the scales if they feel like it. Uh, I, uh, I think that S35VN is a universally better steel all the way, it, it's just better than D2, right? There are some marginal benefits and some, ex, you know, specific, you know, scenarios and environments where D2 might slightly outshine S35VN. But for the most part, you average everything out. S35VN is just a more preferable steel. It's one of my favorite steels ever. I also wouldn't mind CPM 154 as an introductory level steel to those. There are a lot. Is this going to shift on me again? Yeah, there we go. Sorry. Internet's being powered by coal and a... An old man on a bicycle connected to a fan, connected to an outlet, connected to my computer. Um, this is a, a good looking fixed blade. I like that. Real straightforward, purposeful. Unfortunately, it's Aus 10A, which drives me absolutely insane. Aus 10A, I uh, for a long time thought had similar, um, was, was almost identical to 154CM. 
which I appreciate the balance of. It's actually closer to 440C, which used to be like, that was like yesteryear's M390, but it's no longer, like it, it, it's, oh, it's fine, but 440C belongs on a $50 knife, fixed or folding, right? I don't, I, I'm not big on, you know, and I'm sure this will work just fine. I'm just saying, I think there are better steels, you know? I'd like to see this in like um, 3V or crew wear. That's gonna make it cost more money, right? Crew wear. Probably something like that would be really cool. Hey, the Slims are back. Ooh, ooh, I kind of want to buy. So this is not the mini Slim. This is just the Slim, the production Slim. Let's find one I like here. You got an all black one. Uh, my favorite's probably going to be this or the stone washed one. Fat carb. This is the nice thing about this versus all ties that again, it's subframe lock. So the overlay is going to cover it, right? So short little chunky little tank cleavery knife, CPM 20 CV, of course, 375 bucks is really steep. Didn't these used to be under 300? Cool knife though. Definitely cool knife. You're not going to be buying any specific advantage there. You're going to be buying that knife because you really want it, which anymore everything i purchase is specifically just because i want it right i don't even I hardly have to justify it to myself anymore there's a beyond edc demco river wolf sitting there that's interesting um that is a big knife i have also reviewed this one um yeah big titanium frame lock it feels extremely demco as soon as you get that thing in hand it just feels like a demco it's just a regular frame lock okay moving on here all ready to page seven. Some giant hoback machetes. All right. I feel like those should be two-handers. <laughs> the Dessert Warrior Elementum is, of course, out of stock. Uh, let's keep going here. Ooh, CJRB Pyrite, Blade HQ exclusive, Purple Haze and Titanium. Uh, these are nice. Would prefer the high uh, high polished, like the near mirror that they did. But if you're looking for a titanium pyrite, there's a Blade HQ exclusive one right there. Uh, beyond EDC, nah. I want to see what else we got here. Let me give it a second because it's got. A, I think it's got a shift, or maybe not. I don't know. I'm I'm curious about this one a little bit, but they have more of the dagger knives. These weird. <laughs> they're interesting right they're just really strange gladius wooden training sword i you know i think some people look at these i i feel like very people very few people and you know maybe i'm just not integrated into the right community i feel like very few people are training with wooden swords i feel like what people do with this kind of stuff is you're like me and you're in your 30s or your 40s and you're, you're buying this stuff for your kids, but it's really for you so that you and your kid can have like a sword fight in the backyard. And I think that's fine. But I think you're better off going with Cold Steel's polypropylene stuff. Let me tell you, my kids, uh, I have purchased them myself. Um, six or seven of the uh, polypropylene training, heavy quotes on training, training stuff. The swords, the little axes, the little knives, right? Um, one of them I had to round, oh no, actually that, the one I had to round the tip down on was the Honshu training one. I like that one a lot too. Um, but they've all been great. They're, they're heavy. If they get to swinging them too hard, they can definitely do some damage, but they mostly just pretend with them and they throw them and they, you know, the dogs get at them and they carry them off and the, those things are indestructible. If you're going to do that, go with the cold steel training stuff. <laughs> uh, cold steel launch six is on sale. That uh, is a good buy at $109, CPM 154, 8.7 inches. That's a really good buy. Yeah, I'd get after that one. That's a great uh, US auto there. Still kind of interested in taking a look at the Cold Steel verdict. I really hope this isn't 8CR. Ugh. Even at 50 bucks, man, I don't know. 4116. Nah. <laughs> no, I've, I've, I'm sorry. I've become a huge snob, but there are certain steals that are just kind of on my no list. Um, and you know what? If they're a yes for you, that's totally fine. What on earth? 
What is this? $25 flex cut. Flex cut. No, oh it's, oh, it's wood carving knife. Okay, that makes a lot of, that makes way more sense. This knife is perfect for safe, precise cuts. The blade is skewed for more control and easier maneuvering during the carving process. Wood handle is ergonomically shaped for comfort while using your carver for long periods of time to avoid hand fatigue. And the skewed blade makes detail work a breeze. Whether you're a seasoned craftsman or just getting started, this is a great blade for your hobby collection. Um, yeah, that actually looks like it'll do exactly what they said it'll do. And for 25 bucks, I don't think that's a bad price. So there you go. There's some other wood stuff. I don't know. I don't know anything about that. So some expensive battle hatchets. Almar Quicksilver Slimline. Hmm. These Almar, is this from like the reserve? These are weird. $124 D2. It's a cool look. I always like this sort of cross guard. It's a cool looking knife, man. <laughs> Why? Man, some my, my inner mall ninja just like I, I can't help it. It's 11 and, and a quarter inch. Uh, 11 and a quarter inches. <laughs> um, what's the, the handle material is titanium? Where is it made? Eh, where's that thing that says, I don't know. I have no idea. I know people always tell me, there's a drop down menu and I can never find it. I admit I don't buy this. I didn't buy this knife from Blade HQ. It was not available at the time of purchase. If you find one for sale, you better move on it. This knife is built like an F1 race car. <laughs> I'm struggling to find. <laughs> All right. Uh, extremely well engineered ball bearing pivots, razor sharp, no blade play. The blade sits centered in frame. Very smooth, one hand open and closing. I like to stare at it. This guy's being honest. It's the best looking flipper in my collection. It's so well crafted. I bought this with the intention of using it for EDC, but it now resides in a case in my collection. Red Almar Knife Company was sold. He's got some more. Used to be manufactured in Japan, now China. There we go. But, but, the quality of construction has not diminished. So, so good, I want another. I have this in my Blade HQ wish list, my first Elmar knife, and not my last. Your mileage may vary, Jeff C. I feel like Jeff C was being a as pure and honest as he could. That was a um, an example of a review that I, um, I believe at least from Jeffrey's perspective. Right, everybody's perspective is going to be different, but this didn't sound like fluff and nonsense. So Jeff is really into it. Um, you might have to take his word, but there we go. They're made in China. I should, um, <laughs> I should do a. Uh, <laughs> I should if if you ever, I'll tell you what. If you guys ever read funny reviews on knives, um, can you screenshot them and um, send them to me on Instagram or email them to me at metalcomplex87 at gmail.com? Whether they're just funny. Um, or they're hot takes, or they're just weird. I think it would be really funny to do a series um, where I read and react to um, random people's reviews of pocket knives on the internet, um, especially if they're knives that are, are bizarre in and of themselves. I think that would be really fun. Um, so yeah, the BRS Evolve Kopesh is an extremely underrated knife. Guys, let me tell you, I love this thing. I loved it. And if you don't want to take my word on the pictures, um, go watch my review of it. Just type in Metal Complex Kopesh. This is a super cool knife. M390, nine and a quarter inches, titanium, and is it the steel? Stone wash, blah, 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 blah. Stainless steel liners. Um, but this up here, this little piece up here is titanium. I don't know why. Stainless steel liners. Look at that. I'm pretty sure this is titanium. I know the clip is. I just, I can't see the darn spine. Maybe this is steel. Maybe I'm just misremembering. In any case though, there's a great example of an awesome, that that really is a cool knife uh, for 130 bucks. Oh boy, the Gerber para <laughs> pass. How is the Gerber paraframe still there? Um. We, oh, they had a, 
<laughs> they had the SOCOM Bravo Tanto, non-serrated. The, the serrated ones are everywhere. I think this tells us, um, you know, this tells us how, how um, unpopular serrations are anymore. Because that knife, the Reich and Microtech SOCOM Bravo, while it is plenty functional, absolutely 100% caters to the extreme knife enthusiasts. And boy, let me tell you, we do not care for serrations. <laughs> Evidence of this is right here in front of you and on every retailer that you've been scrolling through here lately. The only versions of these things that are left are the versions with serrations. Now, if you have one of these with serrations and you love it, you should keep on loving it because who cares what some idiot on YouTube thinks, right? You don't have to care what I think. I'm referring to myself, I'm the idiot, right? You can love what you love, but the vast majority of us, we don't want those. We want the straight edged ones, right? Um, look at that freaking thing. United Cutlery, Honshu, Boshin, Kukri. I have no idea if I pronounced any of that correctly. All these Kershaw launches are on sale. This is another great one here. MSRP 194. Get out of town. But $99? Yeah. I think that's a good buy too. Some Medfords. Why does this say all American? Oh, here we go. It hasn't loaded yet. <laughs> I was like, no, it isn't. Uh, the Kaiser Hiccup, the Drop Bear um, with the Clutch Lock, those are there, so there you go. They made a Beglitter Fixed Blade. They, ooh, ooh, Arc Form Slim Foot, Tie and Mocha Tie. Now that's a looker there. Boy, oh boy, that's a looker. Not sure if $490 is justified. Um, but it's a cool knife. If you've been looking for a special one of those, right? Because this is the only people who are going to buy. It's not like they made a thousand of these and we're like, oh, please, I hope that there are a thousand people ready to pay $490. No, they only make a few of them because there's only going to be like a handful of people who actually want them, right? These are a little bit easier to choke down, but still, that's still a lot of money, right? Another Almar there. I don't know what that is. Not really interested in that one. Um, what's this? The Cherith? If you see, a, anytime I see a Wii knife that's under $250, I have to look. I like the texturing on it. Pretty basic, probably standoffs, and yeah, it's definitely a stamped out clip. 20 CV, 7 inches, pretty basic. $209 is not bad. I'm just looking on paper, right? I haven't handled it or anything. Looks kind of neat. Bestex Supernova. Um, it's a good looking knife, pretty freaking expensive. Ooh, it's a, a lot smaller than I would have imagined. So this is kind of an aqua Timascus, or maybe it's just the, yeah, looks okay. I don't know. Uh, again, price is pretty high on that one. Um, I think I would like this a lot more if it was like way bigger, you know? I say that a lot. I, uh, I, I I gravitate more towards larger knives. It's not specifically saying larger knives are always better, right? Um, Sog Telus. Is it a fixed blade? Hmm. Oh, that's that's the frame lock. I was like, why does it have thumb studs if it's fixed? There we go. That's the fixed one. <laughs> I, thought, I thought it was a fixed blade with thumb studs. I was like, why why did they do that? Uh, Cryo 440, uh, yeah, it's 60 bucks though, nine inches. It honestly looks like a decent fixed blade. I, I'm not, I'm not mad about that. Um, I think that's good looking. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't take it in orange. I would go with this. That is not a bad looking fixed blade at all. Blade stock thickness. I don't know. That's kind of cool. Sog has, um, Sog has uh, really come a long way, in my opinion. I'm rooting for him. Oh, boy, the next James Brand thing. Pass. Pass. Never. Never again. <laughs> I'm, I'm done. I'm done talking about or showing. I'm talking about it right now. I'm done showing James Brand stuff on this channel. Sorry. There's uninterested, in the, unless they are willing to bring their prices down to just even the, the outer perimeters of sane, right? Just bring it, just get it close. Ridiculous. QSP Rhino looks really cool. Um, I'm not sure why it is so much money. 
Why is it 400 and is this a, okay, it has a special clip on it. It's got a special backspacer. What's the basic one? $358, still feels like a lot. It's neat, but I don't know why they want that much for it. Boy, it's just me, this whole thing is just me complaining about the price. Wait, hold on, was that a zombie weapon? Hold on, hold on. Inner Mall Ninja has to check this out. No, it's a Yoshimi machete. Because, yeah, of course. Ah, yes, of course, the Yoshimi. I'm very uh, familiar with the Yoshimi. I have no idea what that means. Um, it looks like a zombie tool. And it's in 1075. And it's $170. All right. I have no idea what I'm looking at. And there's a spear, if you would like to have a spear as well. Let's move on. <laughs> Let's find something that I can comment on. I'm, not, I'm kind of, honestly, I'm kind of interested in these little um, wood carving knives. I think those are neat. Uh, especially since they're, you know, they're super inexpensive and made very purposeful. Look at that EOS harpoon. I still want to look at an EOS harpoon. Uh... They do some of these with titanium front sides. So, what? This is the big one? Well, why does it look different? Large 0452. That's kind of neat. Is this red? Red and black carbon fiber. Hmm. I'm tired of this black wash. All of the new... ZT has been doing a couple of interesting things here lately. They've had a couple of like, ooh, mm, ah, kind of. I'm kind of tempted, right? This is another example. I'm tempted, but I'm tired of this black wash. I'd like to see a different finish. Um, it's cool, though. The red and gray... It's like blood and gun metal. <laughs> um, red carbon fiber over a titanium frame. This is really cool. I would much prefer this in their satin or their tumbled finish. Um, but that is very interesting. I did not know that that existed. I, had, I have not seen that yet. That's cool. Come on. The dude on the bicycle is taking a nap. <laughs> Come on. I want to look at knives. Okay, where were we? Right here. Ooh. Um, let's go to the next page. I can't believe there are 20 pages of stuff. If you want the uh, Launch 11 in Damascus, I think that's what that is, then there you go. Bunch of um, Paragon Warlocks in aluminum. Those are fun knives, ridiculous knives, but they are very fun and very clickety-clackety. Lots of these wood carving things. They're all over the place. Um, I'm going to tell you guys right now, you guys watch me unbox this, this knife, and then never review it, and I'm going to tell you it is because I hated it. And that happens sometimes. I hated it so much I couldn't think of anything to say that was good. So I um, just didn't... Uh... Sometimes knives like that will still get a review if they have a redeeming quality but I could find absolutely nothing redeeming about that and it's not it's not even fun for me to I know people say well you should review it anyway most the content that I create is created because I enjoy making it it's stimulating right sometimes a knife that has good qualities and bad qualities is still a stimulating thing to talk about right if there's a balance there but when something is just so bad that there's nothing good it's not fun it's not stimulating it's not helpful for anyone it's just like Everybody just all collectively hating something together, and it's not fun. Mm, I'm looking for something else to jump out at me before we go to coming soon. Uh, Heretic Knives, Manticore, Daytona. Look at that freaking thing. I've been seeing these cord wrapped. I want to look at the. This one's still available. <laughs> that thing is wild. Pretty sure... Are these all mirror polished? Pretty sure that's mirror polished and the, the image just isn't going to do it justice. But 
That is quite the expensive survival tool. Let's go to coming soon real quick. Coming soon. I'm really waiting on these. I would very much like to check these out. This is also cool. The Les George SBR. Pretty sure that those are, those are in S35. It's an auto SBR in S35VN that has the um, Sapphire PVD. And it is aluminum with sprinkles. Kind of neat. Partial immunity. Stretch 2XL is coming. This is already there. Or was it was it already there? And it just is listed? No, that one is absolutely available. Um... No, these are neat, but they're so expensive. Mini Malice is coming back. I really, you know, the designer of this messaged under my, I always thought the designer and the um, manufacturer kind of tag teamed the pricing. Apparently, he was also upset about the pricing. He said, I really didn't like that. I wish that they would have gone lower. So it sounds like we made that decision. Um, this is kind of neat. How big is that? Why? We. Look, look, look at this. Look at this. It's beautiful. Oh, God. That's so beautiful. But why, why are you making so many knives that are under? Make a big one. You have enough small knives. It's not small, but this is cool. That's it's so cool looking. What is this called? The Trogan. Um, I just want it to be bigger. If that was eight and a half inches, man, God, that's a good looking knife. <sighs> it's fine. If you like 7.77 inch knives, then it's fine, right? But is this a button lock? The Culex, yeah. Esprit. Oh, the Esprit is here and on sale. I'd go for that. That's a smaller knife that I'd go for. This was one of my favorite knives of 2020 or 2021. Great knife, right? 219 bucks is not, not bad at all. God, I want this to be bigger. That's such, oh, it's so good looking. Look at that one there. Look at this. Look at this. That is a nice looking knife. Man, that is, that's just real pretty. Even at eight inches, you know, it just looks like a knife that should be bigger. Let me know your thoughts. <laughs> Give me your thoughts about that. Do you agree with me? I want to hear your thoughts. Give me your thoughts in the comment section. Uh, wow. $623. Let's take a look at this pattern here. Yeah, okay. I thought it was going to be um, real chalky, real foggy looking, but no, it's that the image they took at least makes it look real clear. Go one more page because you can't this far back, and it could mean like, yeah, it's coming soon in like a year. What's this? Yeah, these drop. That's I was looking for these. These dropped. <laughs> so. 8020 Slim in M4. There were also some other ones in some other steels. I saw the I saw the post about this earlier today. I have no idea when they actually dropped, but to those of you who managed to get one, congratulations, especially to the people. Cuz I would have had I known that this was going to happen. I think they were like, "Hey, they're live. Go get them." Had I known that this was going to be the case, I would have absolutely grabbed one. Uh, look at that. Man, whoever you are, you lucky SOB, whoever grabbed this one. <laughs> M4 and textured titanium, but it's the slim. So the blade stock thickness is only 130 thousandths. Man, what an absolute beast of an EDC. Congratulations to all of you. You jerks. <laughs> I don't, everybody thinks I always get everything that I want. I don't, I don't. It's not like Blade HQ is like, hey, uh, Metal Complex, huh? we'll give you the inside scoop if you want to grab one. They didn't tell me that, so. I think that's going to be pretty much it today, guys. This was fun. I enjoyed it. 
and always enjoy talking about this stuff with you guys. Uh, let me know what you're excited to check out. Like I said, the coming soon page and the new arrivals page will be linked right down below so you guys can check it out if you want to. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.